Hello everyone and welcome to another Cutrate Commander Precon Upgrade Guide, the series in which we take a look at Precon decks and bring them up to Cutrate standards. My name is Grazit and today we'll be looking at the Maestro's Massacre Precon from Streets of New Capenna and its face commander, on Hello the Painter, which we'll be bringing up from its roughly $40 price point to an increased budget of $75 after upgrades. Before we continue, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content and would like me to continue making more videos like this in the future. And if you're feeling particularly generous, consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description to keep me caffeinated as I work on more of these builds. So with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the Commander and Playstyle. On Hello the Painter is a 1-3 Vampire Assassin with Death Touch that costs a blue, a black, and a red with the following ability. The first instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn has Casualty 2. Breaking down his core stats, Anhelo is sporting a relatively low CMC, a below average defensive stat block for his cost, with the death touch keyword somewhat making up for it, and an ability that allows us to double up on the first instant or sorcery spell we cast each turn, at the relatively cheap cost of sacking a 2 plus power creature as we cast it. Looking more in depth into this ability, it's a manaless spell copying effect from the command zone that lets us quite literally double up the effectiveness of our instants and sorceries and possibly even more. Considering that copied spells bypass the need to pay additional costs for the copies, making certain spells much more potent when used in conjunction with Angelo. And while yes, we do need to sack a creature to do this and it is limited to once each turn, our color combination has a plethora of creatures that can reanimate themselves from the bin to be sacked again, or can create tokens that we can sack instead. And since this triggers each turn, we can still double up on any instants and sorceries we cast on our opponent's turns. So, as we can see, Angelo is all about sacking creatures to double up on our instants and sorceries, which is why in this precon upgrade we'll be maximizing his ability to do just that, ensuring that he has both plenty of creatures to sack and powerful spells to double up on. Starting off with our sack fodder first, since Angelo won't be copying much of anything without them, we'll be keeping a good number of the 2 plus power self reanimating and recurring creatures from the core build, and then reinforcing their ranks with new token producers to ensure that Angelo's never short on bodies to double up our spells with. Speaking of spells, while we will be keeping some of the more potent entries that come out of the box, we'll be doing a major overhaul to our instant and sorcery lineup to help optimize our spell selection, adding in more instant speed sources of card advantage when copied with our commander to play on our opponent's turns and avoid having to discard down to size, a sizable amount of tutors and spell recursion sources to get our spells from our deck and grave into our hand, and backbreaking finishers to ensure we can close out our games in one fell swoop when copied with our commander. And to get even more value as we sling these spells, we'll be keeping the payoffs from the core build that let us get extra resources as we cast them and or let us double up on them even further alongside our commander, as well as adding new payoffs to get even more bodies ramp and draw as we continue to cast and copy our spells. So let's show our opponents just how deadly on Hello's skills can be. For years he's been the most skilled assassin on Nuka Pena, and now, with Xander's demise, is the new head of the Maestro's crime family, which is quite the fitting promotion within these criminal art aficionados, as he has elevated death dealing into an art form, which means any who stand against him and the Maestro's will end up as his next masterpiece. So now that we have a better understanding of the commander and playstyle, let's look at the cards we'll be keeping from the base build. Starting off with our kept creatures first, the new entrance Dogged Detective and Sinister Concierge both get to keep their spots. As their two power and ability to recur and replay themselves make them perfect sacrifices for Angelo, while the card selection and temporary removal each provides a solid upside as well. We'll also be keeping Skyclave Shade, Woe Strider, and Squee the Immortal for the same reason, since they can all cast themselves back from our graveyard fairly easily, with Woe Strider even serving as additional card selection as well if we have bodies to spare, to ensure Angelo has plenty of self-reanimating bodies to help fuel his spell duplication. Moving away from Sack Fodder and on to Spell Payoffs, both Goblin Electromancer and Carmilla Glamour Thief make the cut for their ability to help us cast our instants and sorceries, the former by reducing their cost and the latter by ramping us and even tacking some spell recursion upon death, which speeds up our spell slinging playstyle and who, at worst, we can still sack to Angelo if we have no other targets. And finally, our last creature holdover is Kest Dissident Mage, who effectively lets us flash back an instant or sorcery spell from our graveyard on our turns, making her a potent and repeatable source of spell recursion for no additional cost, which lets us get even more mileage out of our spells. Moving on to our kept instance, both Bedevil and Maestro's Charm made the grade, the former by being a very flexible removal option that deals with a wide variety of threats, and the latter for the options it provides us as either removal, AoE drain, or card selection, both of which become even better if we can copy them. Frantic Search also gets to keep its spot, its quote-unquote free card selection being nice enough on its own, but really shining when copied to untap more lands than we used to pay for it, ensuring that we'll have the open mana to cast the spells we just dug for. 
The blue spells Mystic Confluence and Factor Fiction also make it in, each providing our build with some decent instant speed card advantage, with the former also serving as spell disruption or bounce creature removal if needed for some additional utility. And finally, the last instant from the core build that made it in is Waste Management, which, if cast normally, gives us up to two bodies for on Hello to Sack, which is serviceable, but if kicked, becomes a mini army of the damned with Graveyard Hate tacked on for a whole lot more 2-2 bodies for us to use, allowing us to create instant armies and hose graveyards on our opponent's turns, and like our other spells, only getting better as we copy it. Continuing on to our Sorcery Holdovers, which is the category that received the most changes, Feed the Swarm made it in for being a cheap and flexible enough removal option for the cost, Make an Example and Rivers Rebuke both keep their spots by being solid one-sided board wipes that only get better as we copy them, the former by having all our opponents lose half of their creatures again, and the latter by bouncing an extra player's non-land permanence back to hand as well. Maestro's Confluence makes the cut for the sheer flexibility it provides as a source of spell recursion, board disruption, and non-destruction based removal, and finally, Army of the Damned makes the grade by being a strong finisher in its own right with the 26 power worth of bodies it creates on our board twice per game, that only gets deadlier if we copy it to completely take over the game with our enormous horde of zombies. Proceeding to our enchantment keepers, only two from the core build made the cut. The first being Cryptic Pursuit, whose ability to generate tokens as we cast our spells that later turn into additional spells to cast does everything this build wants to do, and the second being Double Vision, which simply copies the first instant or sorcery we cast each turn, making it an enchantment copy of our commander that gives us even more spell doubling shenanigans if we can get them both in play simultaneously. Artifact carryovers are then up next, with the Mana Rock Suite consisting of Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, Izzet Signet, Rakdo Signet, Belwar Stone, and Commander Sphere, all making it into the final build for the very solid amount of ramp they provide right out of the box, as does Wayfarer's Bobble for the cheap land-based ramp it provides as well. Lightning Greaves then makes it in as both a very solid reprint and a way to keep our commander alive, since once our opponents realize what he's capable of, they can and should do everything in their power to get him off our board, which the cheap targeted removal protection these provide helps mitigate. And finally, Twinning Staff makes it in as our final artifact holdover, its ability to copy a spell an additional time making it invaluable in this deck's game plan, and the fact that we can even activate it to copy a spell again if we have the mana being a nice bonus. Skipping over Planeswalkers and going straight to our land base, Command Tower, Crumbling Necropolis, and Path of Ancestry all stay in since they can tap for any of our colors in this tricolor build. Cascading Bluff, Starkwater Catacombs, and Shadow Blood Ridge keep their spots to provide us with some solid filtering to help fix our colors. Choked Estuary, Foreboding Ruins, Smoldering Marsh, and Sunken Hollow all make the cut since they can tap for two of our colors and we're running enough basics to ensure they can usually come into play untapped. Exotic Orchard stays in as we can usually use it to find the mana we need off our opponent's lands since we're in three colors. Thriving Bluff, Thriving Island Thriving more all get to keep their spots by being on-demand fixing for any color we may need when they come down. Myriad Landscape makes the grade for the land-based ramp it provides us access to from the land slot. And finally, Seven Islands, Five Mountains, and Six Swamps make it in as our basics to round out our mana base. That leaves us with a final tally of 65 cards including basic lands we'll be keeping from the base build, leaving us with 35 cards to replace. So now that we've covered all the cards that made the cut from our core build, let's move on to our upgrades. Starting off with our creature upgrades, we'll first be swapping out some of our less efficient self-reanimators with token producers that can better fuel our commander. Bloodsoak Champion, for example, has a reanimation condition based on attacking, which our build really isn't spec'd for, so we'll be swapping it out for Jadar Ghoul Caller of Nefalia, who gives us a fresh 2-2 body on each of our end steps for on Hello to use to duplicate our spells, provided we used up the one that was created the previous turn. Similarly, Rekindling Phoenix and Cyrix Carrier of the Flames reanimation is either too slow or too conditional, so we'll be replacing them with Poppet Stitcher and Tolerant Sky Summoner, both of whom make better use of our spell singing to flood our board with extra zombies and drakes respectively as we cast our spells. Then we'll be replacing Puppeteer Clique, whose reanimation effect is quite good, just not great in this build, with Deca Fractal Theorist, whose Magecraft lets us flood our board with even more bodies as we cast and copy our spells, and can even become a win condition in her own right once we start casting and copying higher CMC spells, enabling her to create massive tokens and giving us the option to make them unblockable to boot. And finally, we'll be swapping out Spellbinding Sopranos, whose ramp is a tad bit too attack-focused, and Parnista Subtle Brush, whose abilities are a bit too niche for us to use effectively, with Stormkiln Artist and Archmage Emeritus, both of whom provide our build with additional utility in the form of ramp and card advantage as we cast and copy our spells thanks to their magecraft, with Stormkiln Artist being particularly effective at allowing us to cast more and more of our spells with its treasure generation. Moving on to our instant upgrades, we'll first be aiming to refine our card draw. 
Ponder and Preordain, for example, are both excellent, but we would rather have our cantrips be at instant speed to be able to copy them on our opponent's turns and not have to discard down to hand size, which is why we'll be swapping them out for Opt and Whispers of the Muse, both of which we can cast at instant speed and whose scry and buyback can give us some extra utility options as we use them. A little chat also gets the axe here, its draw being a bit too mediocre, instead being replaced by Thrill of Possibility, which when copied turns into a discard 1 draw 4, making it a bit better at reloading our hand and more precisely setting up our graveyard. Body Count and Dig Through Time get swapped out here as well, the former's draw being a bit too limited as we're only usually sacking one creature per turn, and the latter, while being a good rate if we can delve the cost away, does hamper our spell recursion pieces if we do so. So we'll be replacing them with Big Score and Unexpected Windfall, both of which effectively become free to cast when copied thanks to the four treasures they'll be generating, and, like Thrill of Possibility before them, still drawing us four cards by pitching one. Then closing out our instant upgrades, we'll be tossing out both Audacious Swap, which is a bit too fixed of a version of Chaos Warp, and Clone Legion, whose high CMC and dependency on our opponent's board state makes it a bit too awkward to use as a finisher effectively, and replacing them with Rakdos Charm and Comet Storm, both of which we can use as targeted removal tools to deal with individual threats, or as finishers to close out games with the burn damage they can deal, especially when copied. The sorcery upgrades are then up next, which underwent a massive overhaul aimed at improving our deck's consistency and ability to close out games. First, we'll be dropping Deep Analysis, which is a bit too mana intensive for the draw it provides, swapping it out for Seize the Spoils, which, like its other Red Brethren in the instant slot, when copied, lets us pitch one to draw four and also creates two treasures, both helping us dig through our deck for more spells and giving us the means to cast them. Flawless Forgery and Xander's Pact also get cut here, both being far too reliant on our opponent's decks to be used effectively in this build, being swapped out instead for Diabolic. Symbolic Tutor and Mastermind's Acquisition, which instead let us tutor up anything we may need directly from our deck to hand to improve our consistency, and become exponentially better when copied to double up on that tutoring. Similarly, Damnable Pact and Drawn from Dreams get the axe, their draw being nice but ultimately being replaced with the tutor's increasing ambition and illicit shipment, giving us more means to get exactly what we want directly from our deck into our hand instead of hoping to draw into it. Then we'll be adding one more tutor, replacing Sever the Bloodlines over cost and Slow Removal with Solve the Equation, which is limited to tutoring up only instants and sorceries, but that limitation usually not being too restrictive as we'll usually be tutoring up for these spell types anyway. Now switching gears from our tutors to the spells we'll be tutoring for, we'll be replacing Hex and Reign of the Pit, both of whose removal is a bit too over costed and limited, with Walk the Aeons and Karn's Temporal Sundering, both of which enable us to take an extra turn and, if copied, often let us win games off the back of them, especially the former since it doesn't exile itself when used, making it easily recurrable from our graveyard afterwards. The overcosted token creators called the Skybreaker, Tolerance Invocation, and Dread Summons will also be swapped out here, being replaced with Jaya's Immolating Inferno, Cut to Ribbons, and Devil's Play, all of which are damaging and life loss X spells we can easily pump with a mana from our treasure generation and copy, making them all potent finishers to deal massive damage to multiple or single opponents, and often eliminating them out of nowhere. In a similar vein, we'll be swapping out the Land Ash Barons, whose fixing is not quite worth running, for another sorcery entrant, Cruel Ultimatum, which may not be as good as our previous finishers to outright eliminate our opponents but forcing them to lose 10 life, discard 6 cards, and sack 2 creatures while we gain 10 life, draw 6 cards, and recur 2 creatures when copied, often being backbreaking enough as is. And finally, we'll be swapping out the subpar wipe chain reaction and the more copy themed Mimic Vat and Zinder Split's Judgment for Call to Mind, Relearn, and Mystic Retrieval, all of which allow us to return instants and sorceries from our graveyard back to hand and allowing us to get extra uses out of our finishers, tutors, and other spells over and over again. Proceeding to our enchantment changes, we'll be replacing Determined Iteration, whose repopulate will find a better home in a more big token focused build, Right of the Raging Storm, whose free token for everyone doesn't really fit what this deck wants to do, and Extravagant Replication, which feels like it could find a better home in a more dedicated permanence copying build, with Ghoulish Procession, Curse of the Restless Dead, and Metallurgic Summonings, all of which reliably get us extra bodies for Ong Hello to Sack to copy our spells, and the last eventually enabling us to get our spells back from our grave if necessary, which is a nice option to have. For artifact upgrades, we'll be swapping out Smuggler's Buggy, whose combat damage base effect may be difficult for this build to use properly, for Swiftfoot Boots, giving on Hello another protection option, or, if he already has Greaves equipped, we can use it to protect one of our other Spell Slinger payoffs instead. And finally, reaching our land upgrades, we'll be swapping out the slower lands of Temple of Epiphany and Maestro's Theater for Shiv and Reef and Frostboil Snarl to help speed up our mana base, the former coming into play untapped by default and the latter having a good chance to do so thanks to our high number of basics, while Grixis Panorama is getting replaced with Ghost Quarter, giving us some spot removal for land instead of more fixing, which this build already has plenty of. So now that we've covered all 35 cards we've upgraded from the core build, let's take a look at the breakdown of this pre-gone upgrade guide. This deck currently has 15 creatures including the commander, 13 instants, 20 sorceries, 5 enchantments, 11 artifacts, 0 planeswalkers, and 36 lands. 
Looking at the stats that matter to our game plan, we have a total of 33 instants and sorceries, 17 cards that care about instants and sorceries, 5 creatures that are capable of reanimating or recurring themselves, 10 cards that are capable of producing at least 2-2 two -two tokens repeatedly or in mass, 5 cards that can tutor cards from our deck to hand, 10 cards that either let us return instants and sorceries from our graveyard back to hand or instead let us cast those spells from our graveyard, and 3 cards that can repeatedly copy our spells, giving us a veritable arsenal of spells to duplicate with our commander, plenty of bodies and tokens for him to sack to do so, various means to get those spells to hand from our deck or grave, and additional ways to further copy those spells or gain other benefits as we cast them. For general deck stats, we have 14 ramp sources, 10 card draw sources, 13 targeted removal sources, and 2 board wipes, giving us a typical ratio of core stats with no outliers. Looking at our mana curve, we have 5 1 drops, 18 2 drops, 15 3 drops, 14 4 drops, 6 5 drops, 4 6 drops, 1 7 drop, and 1 8 drop, giving us a midweight curve that aims to ramp hard and get self reanimators and token creators on board for our commander to use early, followed up by our commander, who will use to double up all our spells until we draw into or tutor up our finishers. The final price then comes out to be 75.55 after upgrades. This price is not including tax and assumes the price you paid for the precon was $40. The price of the cards was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. For further upgrades, the Slowlands, Shipwreck Marsh, Stormcarved Coast, and Haunted Ridge will all help speed up our mana base nicely to ensure we have the mana to cast our spells faster, while Xander's Lounge serves as another tri land to help fix our colors and allows us to cycle it as a bonus. Exsanguinate, Crackle with Power, and Torment of Hellfire are all potent tech spell finishers that only get better as we copy them to help close out games even faster, while Time Warp and Temporal Manipulation are both potent extra turn spells that don't exile themselves to be used again if they can be recurred. And for those with the deepest pockets, Demonic Tutor and Diabolic Intent make for dirt cheap tutors that only get better as we copy them. But just like actual tutors, these are going to cost you if you want the edge over the competition. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. With Maestro's Massacre covered, our next precon upgrade build will be covering Riveter Rampage and its face commander, Henzi Toolbox Torre. So look forward to a big creature blitz build featuring him soon. But before we close out, again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already, as this channel cannot grow without your support. And if you feel like showing your thanks by keeping me caffeinated while I make these videos, please consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description. And if any of you would like to support the channel in a different way, feel free to check out the other deck techs floating around my head if you'd like to check out the latest builds, or click on the link above for a playlist of all the cut-rate commander episodes I've made so far. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.